Dr. Snyder, these are wonderful dreams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But young people are billions mm -hmm. around the world, around the globe. Right. How many are the educators mm -hmm. we need to teach such an education? Well, the, the fact of the matter is, we need a lot. But, you see, I'm also convinced it begins far beyond that. Be, be, before the school teacher, it begins with the parents. What we have to do is to begin to educate parents and help parents accept responsibility. Um, you know, I, live, I lived in an area for many years where the illiteracy rate was 60%. I had children in my school um, whose parents, could, to this day, can neither read nor write a word, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and people who are illiterate only believe what they hear. They can't find out the information, they can't do research, they can't, you know, they only rely on what someone else says, you know. Education opens up the doors for young people and adults because I also believe in adult education as well as child education open up the, the, the system so that people can then understand and come to their own conclusions and their own decisions you know rather than what someone else tells them and this is part of the problem with rad radicalism today is they only believe what they hear you know, because they can't see, they can't read, they don't, uh, you know, no one is willing to give them, in a sense, all the facts. And now I'm coming to a very difficult question. I had the opportunity, waiting for you, to have the short discussion with some participants of the seminar. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, what was you learned today? And they told me mm -hmm. something so to say I don't understand. Yeah. They spoke of the five legs dog, mm -hmm. the four legs dog, <laughs> and that they had been questioned. Mm -hmm. How? How many legs a dog have? Mm -hmm. Four? Mm -hmm. Or five? Yeah. And then they told me that the answer, the correct answer, it was nine. Yeah. The nine legs dog. Right. Is this the new education? And well. <laughs> sorry to say, but yeah. what does it mean? Well, I mean, uh, uh, that's, that's a wonderful question. Uh, because it, it gives me an opportunity to clear up, you know, what seems to many people a misunderstanding. Um, first of all, the basic question about the five-legged dog. The, the question is, if you count the tail as a leg, how many legs does a dog have? And the, the answer mathematically and in the intellectual part of the brain is five. However, in the sensory, the, the feeling part of it, and in nature, the nature knows you cannot count a tail as a leg. And therefore, the answer is four. Because a tail is not a leg, so you have four legs. So, okay, so now, so you, so, yeah, so now you ask me, where do we get nine? Well, yes, please. The, the, the answer to that becomes quite simple. Because we have the five-legged idea, which I have just explained. And then we have the new thinking the sensory thinking, the, the five-legged dog is what we call intellectual thinking, that using the intellectual, the logic of the brain. The, however, the nature senses, knows that the tail is not a leg, and so the answer is four. And how do you get nine then? Well, what we, we can't throw, as I would like to say, we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater so to speak. What we need to do is combine, bring together the two kinds of thinking. The intellectual 
thinking and the, what we call the new brain or the sensory thinking together. Therefore, you add 4 plus 5 and you get 9. Now you have both kinds of thinking of the brain, the old brain thinking, the new brain thinking, and, and, and if people really think this through, they can, see the, they can see how this works. You know, nature doesn't tell lies. So nature isn't going to say that uh, there's a five-legged dog by counting the tail. Nature can't do this. For one thing is nature senses, it doesn't have language, you know. We as humans are the ones who apply the language to it, you know. We're the ones who, in a sense, created the five-legged dog, which never existed in the first place, you see. And, and, I, and that's a very interesting question. So that, that is my answer. And if you need to have it detailed further. See, it, I used to start only with a five-legged dog story. Uh, Dr. Cohen and I developed this uh, quite some years ago, but we've also found that we confused everyone. <laughs> As you it, tease them. You know, <laughs> uh, in a way, we tease them, you know, with it. Uh -huh. But we did it to demonstrate the kind of thinking that logical thinking, intellectual thinking does, and the kind of thinking that is going to be required if we're going to make the kinds of changes in the world that are going to be, need to be made, and that's through the senses rather than through the logic or the intellect. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Snyder, but you refer to a huge step towards a new education, an education where we're not going to use any more our uh, This concrete mind, mm -hmm. which calculates all the time, mm -hmm. and that we are going towards an education which will be a sensory education. That, that's exactly the point that I'm trying to make. That's why we're talking about a nine-legged education. Certainly we have to keep the logic. Certainly we have to keep the intellect. But what we have not allowed into the system up until now is the sensories, the senses. And what I am suggesting that now is a time in new education to do this. We're not, I'm, I'm not prepared to throw out, nor is it necessary to throw out this, you know, to throw out the, you know, the, the, the five legs yet. As long as we understand the basis for those five legs, you see, that you don't count the tail as a leg. because Logically, you ask a child in a classroom the answer, and you'll get one answer. But you ask nature a question, and you'll get another answer. What I'm saying we, is we need to bring the, the two brains, the two ways of thinking together, you know. Um, not unified, because there's, you're, you're still not going to want them to become the one, you know. But you wind up. So first we may speak of balancing the brain. Yes, balancing the brain. And this is going to bring peace? Probably the only way. Probably the only way. What we have to be able to do, it seems to me, is sense in nature the balance that nature has. Because that's the kind of balance in the world that we have to seek. You know. You don't you 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 find um, some violence in you know in nature, but only for survival. You don't have people marching off to war over a belief system. Animals do not march off to war over a belief system. The only time animals you know display violence is when their survival is at stake. You see, but much of the much of the world many and much of the wars are not based upon on, on that kind of principle. They're based upon a belief system. You are wrong, I am right, and therefore I must overtake or overcome you to sh teach you that you need to believe what I believe. Otherwise, you know, we'll do away with you. 
And unfortunately, much, much of the world situation is based upon this kind of thinking today, on this kind of intellect and logic. 